sentence fragment. Oh, la shmup. Mary is a waitress and she has to put up with a lot at her job. Aching feet, the smell of fried food, and a butt ugly line cook who has a crush on her. But there's nothing that drives Mary quite so crazy as when her customers speak to her in sentence fragments. When Mary asks Bill the bus driver what he wants for lunch and he says Reuben sandwich, his response is a sentence fragment. When Mrs. Crabtree, the retiree, shakes her glass at Mary from across the room and yells, tea, the old bat is speaking in sentence fragments. Really, with all the sentence fragments Mary hears every day, it's a miracle she hasn't gone at anyone with a steak knife. Grammatically correct sentences, as a rule, have at least one subject and one verb. For example, in the two-word sentence, Mary cleaned, we have the subject of the sentence, Mary, performing the action of the verb, clean. Sentence fragments, however, tend to lack verbs, which is why they aren't real sentences. Now, sometimes we encounter one-word sentences that look like sentence fragments, but are actually full-on, pure-blooded sentences. For example, there's the imperative sentence form, which consists of a one-word command. When a customer spills his drink on the floor and Mary's boss says, Mop! The word mop is the command and Mary is the implied subject and it's kind of like saying, you mop. When a customer tries to sneak out of the restaurant without paying her bill and Mary shrieks, pay, the word pay is the command and the thieving customer is the implied subject and it's like saying, you pay. It's also possible to make one word sentences out of exclamations. When Mary drops a plate on the floor and screams, the exclamation is a sentence. When Mary gets lemon juice in a paper cut on her finger and yells, ouch, the exclamation ouch is a sentence, but still not as much fun to yell as Now here comes the tricky part. It just so happens that sometimes we can have both a subject and a verb, but no sentence. This type of sentence fragment occurs when the subject and the verb are part of a dependent clause. Dependent clauses have two characteristics. They start with a subordinating conjunction, like because, although, or if, and they depend on the existence of a main clause. Not related to Santa. Say we have the sentence, although Mr. Johnson had a $40 ticket, he only tipped Mary two bucks. If the dependent clause, although Mr. Johnson had a $40 ticket, stood on its own, it wouldn't make any sense. It's a sentence fragment, and we need the rest of the sentence, the main clause, he only tipped Mary two bucks to explain what the dependent clause means. And what the dependent clause means is that Mr. Johnson is, well, a jerk. Let's try another. Say we have the sentence, because the parents were too lazy to go into the bathroom, they changed their baby's diaper at the table in the middle of the restaurant. If the dependent clause, because the parents were too lazy to go into the bathroom, stood on its own, we'd be lost and quite intrigued. This sentence fragment needs its main clause, they changed their baby's diaper at the table in the middle of the restaurant, to provide context. And the context provided is that some people are just nasty. There are some easy ways to check whether or not a sentence is actually a sentence fragment. If there's a verb, then it's probably a sentence. If there's only one word, and that word is an exclamation or a command, then it's a sentence. If it's a dependent clause with no main clause to tag along, well, it's a sentence fragment. And now we must excuse Mary, she's going to go pay Mr. Johnson back for his lousy tip by uh, slipping some hand soap into his salad. Subscribe to check out more equally fantabulous videos. You should see the subscribe button just below this one. If you're having trouble locating it, we recommend you watch our video, How to Find the Subscribe Button.